Beaufort. Um, I'm Nick Wilson, Public Information Officer for Carter County, and on behalf of the County Commissioners and the entire community, it's an absolute honor to welcome you all to this important occasion. Today marks a historic day for Carter County. This ceremony is the culmination of countless hours of dedication, collaboration, and most importantly, a shared passion for the very foundation of our nation. We often take for granted the Charters of Freedom, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. These documents are more than just words on parchment. They are the living, breathing framework that defines our society. Today, these cornerstones of freedom find a permanent home here in the heart of Carteret County. The Declaration of Independence boldly declared our independence, severing ties with British rule and establishing us as a sovereign nation. The Constitution laid the groundwork for our government, outlining the separation of powers, the delicate balance between federal and state authority, and the fundamental rights of our citizens. The Bill of Rights, etched forever in our national consciousness, protects our most cherished freedoms from speech and assembly to right to bear arms and practice our faith. These freedoms are the very core of what it means to be American. We're incredibly grateful to each and every one of you for joining us in this celebration on this occasion. To begin our ceremony today, please join me in welcome retired Army Colonel and current Carteret County Public School Board member, Mr. Dennis Goodwin, who will deliver our invocation. Following the invocation, the Carteret County Sheriff's Office Honor Guard will present the colors. We'll then have the privilege of standing together as County, Carter County Manager Tommy Burns leads us in the Place of Allegiance, followed by a performance of the National Anthem by U.S. Air Force retired Senior Master Sergeant Dolly Witt. Would you join me in prayer? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you there are organizations we want to keep our corporate memory of freedom alive. We thank you for these charters of freedom that are on my right. For the foundational faith, the courage, the belief in the freedom of everyone and that if everyone isn't free, no one is free. We pray, Lord, that the memory will be close the understanding will be deep and the living out of these foundational charters would be evident in every American life. We thank you for those today that's, that stand up for us, willing to give their life for us in foreign countries. We thank you, Lord, that each one is gathered here saying that this is important. That these, not only are these documents are important, but the freedom we have to gather is important. And remembering who we are and whose we are is vitally important. We pray now in our Lord's name. Amen. Stand as our colors are presented. Can you see by the dawn's 
early light. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> Thank you to Mr. Goodwin, the Sheriff's Office, Tommy, and uh, Ms. Whip for such a moving addition to the National Anthem. Um, okay, now let's introduce our first speaker, Representative Celeste Cairns, who serves as our representative for Carteret County and parts of Craven County in the North Carolina House of Representatives. Since taking office in 2023 for her first term, Representative Cairns has shown remarkable dedication and has made significant strides in advancing the interests of Carteret County. She has emerged as a strong advocate for our community on various legislative fronts. Representative Cairns is actively involved in several key committees, including appropriations, banking, energy, public utilities, military and veterans affairs. Additionally, she holds the vice chair position for the Marine Resources and Aquaculture Committee. Please join in extending a warm welcome to Representative Cairns. Good morning. What a privilege it is to be here, and what a privilege it is to represent the people of Carteret and Craven County. We could not have asked for a more beautiful day. I think uh, the Lord is smiling on us this morning as we gather here. Thank you to the Pattersons for your vision and for your desire to see these wonderful monuments placed around the nation, around the state of North Carolina. These documents are collectively referred to as the Charters of Freedom. I really did not expect to be as moved as I was this morning as I looked at them. You look at the Declaration of Independence, you realize the risk that these men faced as they signed this document. They knew that they were pledging their lives and everything they held dear to bring freedom to this nation. The state that our freedoms, that our rights for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness come to us just intrinsically because we are people, because they are granted to us by our creator. This was a novel idea at the time. And they were telling the king, we wish to be free. We have these rights. They don't come from you. They shouldn't come from you. The government should exist to protect those rights, not to grant them to the people. What an incredible statement that they made. And when you look at the signatures and you see the name Thomas Jefferson, with whom I share a birthday, and I'm proud of that, and John Hancock with his large letters that he used, he said he wanted the king to be able to read his signature without his spectacles. That's bravery, it is. And recently we had a resolution that we did before we started this last session, and it was something that I thought was very important. And the speaker was asking us to sign this resolution and we had to do it electronically so it, there wasn't the actual signature involved i said if there's any way to make my signature large and bold john hancock style 
<laughs> I would like to see that happen. In some ways it was a joke, but it tells you that we have this lore, right? This history, this American history, things that mean the world to us. And to be able to see it, see his signature so boldly presented, it'll mean more to people as they look at it. As the school children can come and see these true replicas of these precious documents. And what a wonderful thing that they will have access to them. If you can't get to D.C., if you can't go to the National Archives, and sometimes people are not able to do that, or if you're lucky enough to see it once or see it twice in the course of your lifetime. But here they are now, and we can look at them, and we can remember, and we can be moved, and we can pledge again to defend our freedoms and to appreciate the heritage that we have. Thank you for letting me speak to you today. You'll hear from the real speakers now, but it is a great honor to be here and once again to be able to represent you in the legislature of North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Cairns, for your words and for being here today. Next, I'm honored to welcome our uh, Carter County Manager, Tommy Burns. For over seven years, Tommy's been the driving force behind our county's successful operations. As the Chief Administrator of County Government, he oversees everything from the budget to ensuring our ordinances, resolutions, and laws are followed. Please join me in welcoming our next speaker, Tommy Burns. Good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to share a few remarks with you um, on this historic occasion. But before I do that, there are some dignitaries here that we need to recognize. Um, their presence here um, shows their commitment to these same charters of freedom that we're dedicating today. Uh, you just heard from Representative Cairns, um, our House of Representative member, and she does a wonderful job representing us in Raleigh and um, getting back into the new session, short session, and uh, she's busy. I can tell you she's a busy lady, but she always has time for our phone calls, and we appreciate that, Celeste. I uh, also want to welcome our Sheriff, Asa Buck. Uh, sheriff Buck is the best sheriff I've ever worked with, and I think he's the best sheriff in North Carolina, and there's a bunch of other folks that I think would agree with that. Uh, also here today is our Superior Court Judge, Bob Cherry. Bob, thank you for being here. Uh, Dennis Goodwin, who you heard from earlier, our Carteret County School Board member and retired Army Colonel and Chaplain. Thank you for being here, Colonel Goodwin. Uh, representing the town of Beaufort is our wonderful mayor, Sharon Harker. Thank you for being here, Sharon. Uh, also with her is Perry Harker, who's the vice president at Carter Community College and uh, does a great job with our students over there. Uh, also representing the town is Town Commissioner Bucky Oliver. Bucky, thank you for being here. And representing the town of Cape Carteret, John Ritchie and Courtney Barnhill. John, Courtney, thank y'all for being here. And also from... Uh, Dr. Greg Murphy's office, the Constituent Services Director, Caroline Wilson. Caroline, thank you for being here. Um, before we get into um, the speech I prepared, I thought that it would be fitting at this moment if we would um, recognize our veterans that are here today. So if you're a veteran, if you're able to stand, if you're standing, please raise your hand. We'd like to recognize you and your service. As I was thinking what would be a topic uh, to provide some metaphorical conversation about, I was drawn to a passage in Micah in the Old Testament that talks about the vine and the fig tree. And it's a metaphor that's been used throughout history for a number of reasons and in a number of situations. And I thought I would share some of those with you and so, uh, so that we can all sort of understand the context of how important this was and how many people and how many sacrifices have gone in to creating these documents and not only creating them but preserving them and maintaining them uh, in our system of government and i was drawn to a sermon from 1795 in uh, boston's second baptist church by thomas Baldwin, and he said quote we are a people highly favored of the lord our civil and religious privileges are none of the least. We sit under our own vine and fig tree, and none are permitted to disturb us or make us afraid. 
this is in reference to Micah 4 4, as I mentioned in the Old Testament. But interestingly enough, it's also a passage that our first president quoted from frequently. George Washington, in a letter to Marquis de Lafayette on February the 1st of 1784, said, quote, My desire is, owing to my desire to rest under my own vine and fig tree. And they were corresponding after their uh, service in the American Revolutionary War fighting together. So you can understand that this religious and political metaphor was used as the vine represents the life, and the vitality, the goodness, and the gladness that are contained in the scriptures. And those of you that study those scriptures know that there's a true vine that's mentioned in there as well. The fig tree symbolizing the promise and blessing of a land. It also represents peace, security, freedom from fear, and from government. Together, the vine and the fig tree represent national and individual security, peace, and prosperity. And they all take both, both taking years of patient labor before they bear fruit, which also represents continuity and stability because to plant a vine or a fig tree and to enjoy their fruit implies a long, undisturbed habitation. According to Daniel Dreisbach in a 2007 article entitled The Vine and the Fig Tree, he wrote of George Washington that it, it desires that civil government be strong enough to maintain the rule of law, provide essential security, and preserve private property. An effective government, in this case of the vine and the fig tree, can be viewed as a metaphor for the rule of law and the government which enforces it. This is precisely what these three documents before you today that we will dedicate shortly achieve. A balance between the essentials of the government and the protection of its citizens, yet balanced enough to preserve those individual freedoms and the desires that we all hold dear. The freedom to speak openly and publicly. The, speak, the freedom to assemble for a redress of grievances. The freedom to peacefully protest, peacefully protest. The balance between protection and freedom of conscience and equality, the ability to worship as one chooses, natural rights under these foundational documents pointed out and herein all follow President Washington's expression of hope for Americans in his first draft of the farewell address in 1796 where he said, quote, there will be none that can make us afraid. Another reference to Michael 4.4. Later innovations connected with freedom of religion, such as the First Amendment, sought to protect the diversity of denominations and respect other beliefs so that governments could never infringe upon those freedoms. All of these contained within these three documents. And another reference to the article I uh, mentioned earlier, President Washington was speaking in 1790 to a Hebrew congregation in Newport, Rhode Island. And for the sake of historical context for his comments, keeping in mind that the Declaration of Independence in 1776 had been adopted, the Constitution had been presented in 1787 and ratified in 1788, and the Bill of Rights, which would be ratified later in 1791. But hear the President's words in that. The citizens of the United States of America have a right to applaud themselves for having given to mankind examples of an enlarged and generous policy a policy worth imitation. All possess a like liberty of conscience and immunities of citizenship. It is now no more that toleration is spoken of as if it was by indulgence of one class of people that another joy enjoyed the exercise of their inherent natural rights. For happily, the government of the United States, which gives to bigotry no sanction, to persecution no assistance, requires only that they live under the protection and should demean themselves to be good citizens in giving it all, on all occasions, their effectual support. May the children of the stock of Abraham who dwell in this land continue to merit and enjoy the goodwill of other inhabitants, while everyone shall set safely under his own vine and fig tree, and there shall be none to make him afraid. May the Father of all mercies scatter light and not darkness in our paths and make us all in our several vocations useful here, and in his own due time and in his own way everlastingly happy. 
So you can see again these connotations between these documents as they uh, infiltrated the lives of these Americans. And I always tell people it's important to understand history within the context of when it was occurring. Finally, these sacred documents we revere today should be viewed and studied by all ages. They should still be taught in our schools within the proper context of which they were written. And to me, the most moving aspect of this ceremony and what I believe this is all about is on the back of your program, you see a group of school children closely examining these documents and studying and reflecting. And that's what our county commissioners wanted to achieve in working with the Charter of Freedom to accomplish this. Uh, these documents should provide a history map for freedom, a freedom that some enjoyed early on in our founding and others only later when civil rights in America provided more emphasis on the protection of freedom for all people. These documents need to be preserved, protected, and presented to remind us all of the enduring sacrifice that many others have made before us, some of those even here today. Um, I was reminded of a letter in 1864 that President Lincoln shared with a lady who had lost several sons in the Civil War and he was thanking her for their service. And in that letter, he closed by saying how great a sacrifice they had made upon the altar of freedom. Hear those words, be encouraged by those words. Our nation's a nation that was divinely inspired and built on a spirit of liberty and justice for all people. These principles of government and civics and belief in something greater than ourselves need to be invigorated daily and in our lives as they provide the foundational principles for all of our experiences. As we close today, you will notice that in, in to addition to these documents, there's behind you on this historic courthouse building the simple words, In God We Trust, as a fitting and relevant tribute to our nation's founding and a central and guiding influence on all three of these documents to be dedicated here today. One final reference to the article that I mentioned earlier comes from Dr. Martin Luther King and his 1964 Nobel Prize acceptance speech in which he described a prophetic vision in which, quote, peoples everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. Dr. King would go on and say, I still believe that one day Mankind will bow before the altars of God and be crowned triumphant over the war and bloodshed and that nonviolent redemptive goodwill will proclaim the rule of the land. And the lion and the lamb shall allow them together and every man shall sit under his own vine and fig tree and none shall be afraid. In closing, the image of sitting under one's own vine and fig tree comforted God's people in the Old Testament two and a half millennia ago. They appealed to George Washington in the American founding era, and as Dr. King's words remind us, continues to inspire hope today. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Um, now we'd like to welcome Mike Unruh. He is the director of Foundation Forward. Mike and his team are here today to uh, share the story, so let's give him a warm welcome. Good morning. Thank you everyone for coming out and joining us on this beautiful day as we dedicate these Charters of Freedom, our Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights. Before all of you leave, I want you to make sure that you go to one of these tables in the back and sign your name on the signing sheets. There is a time capsule that's installed in the back of the Constitution, and everyone's name who's uh, present here today will be included in that time capsule, which will commemorate this event. So please make sure to do that. And now I would like to take some time to introduce our team with Foundation Forward our education director and part-time photographer, Dr. David Streeter, our operations manager, Harry Snyder, our, off our office manager and dedication ceremony director, Connie Snyder, 
and our founders, Mary Jo Patterson and Vance Patterson. Uh, Vance is going to come up and tell you the story of our organization in just a few moments, but I want to thank Carteret County, the town of Beaufort, and all of you for making this vision a reality. This is something that started several years ago, and everyone knows what we've been through in the past four or five years. And uh, we weren't sure how this was gonna come along you know, with, with the delays that we received, but the community and the contractors that built this overcame and persevered. And so I would like to thank every single member who has been involved in getting this approved, selecting this site, and building this setting. We couldn't have done it without you. And now it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce our founder, Vance Patterson. You are to be commended for making the effort to be here today. My question is, are you ready to be a part of history? Because we're going to dedicate your charters of freedom. It's going to be here for the next 300 to 500 years, and your future generations are going to know you were here. My name is Vance Patterson. I'm a father of four, married 49 years with my wife, Mary Jo, which makes her a son. We're from Burke County, which is in the western part of North Carolina. If you ask Perry, it's about a seven, seven hour drive from here, uh, pulling a trailer about halfway between Hickory and Asheville. I'm a businessman. I started a company in 1989 to make industrial fans. We actually make things out of metal, ship them across the country and around the world. I'm a very proud American manufacturer. I'm going to tell you a little about the inspiration behind the foundation that made your charge of freedom possible. I'm going to tell you a little about the setting itself, and I'm going to give you a challenge to take with you. About 12 years ago, Mary Jo and I were up in Washington, D.C. We decided to go to the National Archive. We had never seen the original document, the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. We found ourselves wandering down these hallways looking at different displays. And then it opened up into this large room. We walked through these big bronze gates into this rotunda, and there are the founding documents on the other side. They're in chronological order. Declaration of Independence on the left, four pages of the Constitution in the middle, and the Bill of Rights on the right. This is when we learn that these are known as your charters of freedom. Now, one of the things I liked was once you got in this rotunda, there were no lines. You just wander around looking at different exhibits, and when you get a chance, you step up and look at the documents. I will never forget the first time I saw the Declaration of Independence. Something our founding fathers had actually penned and then looked down and saw their signatures. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Rutledge, Wilson, and the others. I just got goosebumps. And then we moved over and saw the first page of the United States Constitution in those three words, we the people. I actually got a lump in my throat. Mary Jo was wiping tears out of her eyes. It was really an emotional experience for us. Well, the following year, back in Burke County, I got to thinking about that experience, and the thought came to me, what if I could duplicate that experience and bring it back to Burke County? So I told Mary Jo about the thought, and she liked it, so we started working on a project. And it turned out to be an education project, and the scope was to design and build a replica of the Gardens of Freedom as displayed in that little country. Put it in a central location in Burke County, it had to have high visibility, high foot traffic, and easy access for school children and veterans. Well, it took over two years to get this done, even though it was a gift for Mary Jo and I to the county. But after a late night joint session between the Burke County Commissioners and the Morganton City Council, they agreed to accept the gift and give us a suitable location. Well, there was something we hadn't told anybody. You see, we'd only seen these documents once. There are no dimensions, no measurements, no drawings, nothing available to the public. So the next morning, Mary Jo and I got up, got in the car, drove back up to Washington, walked into the rotunda. Now they won't let you take out a tape measure and start measuring a national treasure. 
But Mary Jo and I had a plan. She went one way, and I went another. And I stepped up in front of the Constitution and did this. So I'm standing about in the middle. Meanwhile, Mary Jo is walking up and actually standing next to the document, turning around, facing the audience, and marking on her body the different elevations. And then we left before anybody asked us what we were doing. So I tell people, what you're sitting here may not be exactly what's in this Washington. Keep in mind, it's based on two faces of a short guy and three marks on my wife's body. <laughs> we know fair ladies do have our ways. Well, on July 2nd, 2014, we dedicated the first Charters of Freedom setting outside of Washington, D.C. In downtown Morganton, North Carolina, on the old Burke County Courthouse Green. It was so well received, and Mary Jo and I enjoyed the process so much, we decided to do another one in Cherokee County, little town of Murphy, as far west in North Carolina as we go. That was dedicated on September 17, 2014, Constitution Day. The third one went downtown Asheville in Bunker. At the time, we decided to set up a 501c3, a foundation, because we knew we would be doing more. I want to take a second here and tell you a little about the foundation. Three principles. Number one is education. No matter what you take from this experience, it all comes back to education. Education to preserve American history at the founding of our country, and education in civics, so all will know how government is meant to serve and protect we the people, federal, state, and local. Number two is community. Having your charters of freedom here in, in uh, Beaufort allows you all a place to gather where you can celebrate, to honor, to reflect, and to celebrate. And number three is access. You see, not everybody can get to Washington, D.C. to see the original documents. It took Mary Jo and I over 60 years to get there the first time. So we want to have access to these documents in the community in a proper setting. To date, we have gifted and dedicated 52 Charters of Freedom Centers across the country. That's in North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Nebraska, South Dakota, Virginia, Alabama, as far west as Carson City, Nevada, and as far north as Wasilla, Alaska. Yours is the 53rd here in the state, uh, here in the country, and the 33rd here in North Carolina. And I'll say a little more about that later. Now let me tell you a little about your setting. One of the things I learned in life is if you want a monument or a setting to last, you put more underground than above ground. This is not a tip over monument. Your foundation goes down three and a half feet. It is solid, reinforced board concrete coming up into a solid core. Just the core and the foundation of that centerpiece weighs over 38,000 pounds over 19 tons. There are six documents displayed. Each one is on a quarter inch etched bronze and weighs over 60 pounds. There's a medallion on the front of the, of the U.S. Constitution that's very special. We commissioned artists across the country to come up with that design. The eagle represents the Declaration of Independence. Proud, bold, defiant. Seven stars, above eagle represent the seven articles of the United States Constitution. And the 10 stars under the eagle represent the first 10 approved amendments to your Bill of Rights. Now people ask us, why are we doing this? And we tell them, yes, it's very expensive, but we believe it's more important than money. We believe it gives us a direct link to our founding fathers by helping to preserve what it is they gave us to us, of government to serve and protect. We learned that we had four founding fathers who were very big on education. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and James Madison. They believed that in order to have a free and independent country, you must understand how government works. But you cannot control what you do not understand. Thomas Jefferson, in 1789, wrote, whenever a people are informed, they can be trusted with their own government. And James Madison, five foot four inch rock star of his era wrote in 1822, 
a people who mean to be their own governors must arm themselves with the power found here. You wouldn't believe how many people come up to us when we're building it and say, that's it? Just four pages to the Constitution? And say, that's it? All of our laws and our government are based on those four pages. You wouldn't believe how many people don't know that the first ten amendments are our Bill of Rights. I guarantee there are people here today who are learning that. Now, you may have noticed I haven't been calling this a monument. The definition of a monument is a memorial to honor a person or an event. This is not a memorial. This is an active, hands-on educational supplement to your school's curriculum. Imagine, if you will, teachers bringing their third, fourth, and fifth grade classes down here to your charter cathedral for an annual field trip. And while they're here, we'll learn a little about the founding fathers, a little about the, doc the documents and the history surrounding them, to learn a little about government, federal, state, and local, and local heroes. This is already happening in communities across the country where they've got their own charter history. And the students just love these hands-on field trips. Often, they'll actually take their parents back down and show them what they learned. There are 3,142 counties, boroughs, parishes, independent cities, and census zones in the United States. Our long-term goal is to put a charter as a freedom setting in as many of those communities as possible. Our short-term goal is to go all 100 counties of North Carolina and all 46 counties of South Carolina so that people across the country are saying, what is going on in the Carolinas? Our hope is that our future generation will come from communities that have their own charter of freedom. That they'll no longer grow up just talking about the Constitution and Bill of Rights in Washington, but they'll be talking about their Constitution and their Bill of Rights, the ones they grew up with right here in both North Carolina. Now, I've got a document covered up here that I want to briefly tell you about. As I would be making presentations across the country uh, and across the Carolinas, sometimes when I get done, they'd say, well, what about the other amendment? And I knew what they were talking about, the 13th, 14th, and 15th. The 13th abolished slavery, the 14th guarantees uh, citizenship, and the 15th guarantees the right to vote. And I'd say, well, those are very important, but they're not part of the Charters of Freedom, so they're not part of the gift. And sometimes the discussion that would follow would get in the way of him accepting the gift. Well, I got to thinking over the years, this has become much more than just the experience that Mary Jo and I had. It's about education, and it is important that people know that these freedoms exist. So I did some research, and I learned that there's never been a document put together showing all of the civil rights amendments. Because I learned that there are actually two more that need to be added. The 19th, the 19th which is women's suffrage, and the 24th, which is the result of the 1964 Civil Rights Act which says you do not need to own property in order to vote, no poll tax. So I put together a document, together with the fifth article of the Constitution, explaining how the Constitution could be modified. And I commissioned a calligraphy artist, uh, John Stevens, nationally known calligraphy artist out of Winston-Salem, to come up with a document similar to the Bill of Rights. So he researched the 18th century writing styles, materials used, and a format for doing documents. It took him over five months to do it, which being an entrepreneur, I thought was a little bit long. But he came up with a true work of historic art. And that's what we're gifting you today, is one of the documents very few will put in Your civil rights amendments. going to leave you with a challenge. Our founding fathers were challenged by the most powerful force in their, in their time, the British Empire. They protested, they revolted, they fought a war and won a war, all the while setting up a government that's still in effect over 230 years later and replicated by more than 60% of the countries around the world. They met their challenge. Nick Wilson, Tommy Hearns, Laurie Turner 
or challenge the freedom, the charter the freedom setting here to vote for North Carolina. As of today, they get their challenge. Your challenge actually began about seven years ago. Mary Joan had just finished dedicating a charter the freedom setting at Hanover College in Southern Indiana. And we were getting ready to meet. And I looked across the campus center, and there was Ron Wells, African American facility engineer who had helped me a lot. And I said, I need to go thank this guy again. So I walked over, I walked up, and said, uh, Ron, you know, thanks again for all the work you did. I really appreciate it. He said, well, thank you for making this contribution to our community. And I said something like, I always say, uh, you're welcome. Just make sure they use it after we leave. And he looked at me and he said, Mr. Patterson, I've already done that. He said, I brought my son over last week. And we had to talk. And I said, Ron, that means more to me than anything anybody's ever said after a dedication. Way to go. So here's your challenge. You bring your child, your grandchild, your niece, your nephew down here to your charters of freedom. You have to talk like Ron Wells did. You tell them about their freedoms and rights and how those freedoms and rights guarantee them a better life than most of the rest of the world. To pursue their passion, to chase their dreams, to accomplish their goals and get out of life that they want to get out of life. You do that. Mary Jo and I and all of Foundation Forward, as far as this gift is concerned, we'll call it even. Thank you. First of all, this is a certificate for the Civil Rights Amendment, uh, and it reads, this certificate is proudly presented to Carteret County. This certificate of authenticity certifies that the bearer of the green was that the bearer, the rightful owner of the Civil Rights Amendments document, verified by the authenticity number below, corresponding oral hologram and barcode label on the other side of this document. And thank you. Uh, and that is meant to be circulated around the schools and then hung in a, in a suitable location for all to see. And while you're still up here, I've got another one. The Charters of Freedom setting located at the Carteret County Courthouse is hereby gifted to Foundation Forward Incorporated of Burke County, North Carolina, to the children, veterans, and citizens of Carteret County, Beaufort, North Carolina. All responsibility, rights, and care of this setting displaying the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights are hereby accepted by Carteret County, April 27, 2024. Got just uh, a few more things to do that won't take too long. We're going to have a family sort in just a minute. Uh, Mike mentioned something about a uh, time capsule in the back of the setting here. We're not going to seal it today. What we're going to do is uh, ask people to send us letters, letters from uh, education, law enforcement, military, uh, community, that we want in there from me, from the foundation. Along with memorabilia, uh, everybody's signature today was in the time capsule. Also, video of today, uh, so you'll probably all have your faces in there. Of course, anybody who's spoken. Time capsule will be sealed uh, probably in about three months. It won't be open until September 17, 2084. 2087. Thank you. My first dedication this year. 2087, which will be the 300th anniversary of the United States Congress. On that day, all time capsules will be open and letters read, so it should be a very interesting day. Now, if you're here when that time capsule is open, if there's any problem, keep in mind that we need a combination of Tommy Burns. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the last thing we're going to do is 
is an enhanced salute. Uh, I need six volunteers to meet with Terry over here. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Anybody that wants to be a fire attorney, no previous, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, make some noise. This is what everybody listens to. While we're doing that, I want to tell you a little about the first day I saw it. I knew I wanted to do a cannon salute in the first dedication. I wanted to do a cannon salute in the first, first dedication back in 2014. But I didn't know how many times to fire the cannon. I knew 21 wasn't right, but it's, uh, I did some research. And I learned that the cannon salute actually started back in the 1600s when a ship pulling into port wanted to show the port that they meant no offense. So they turned their cannons to sea and discharged three of them. The port, having more cannon and more powder, would respond 70 times. That's when you get the 21 guns. All right? They, uh, so I knew that wasn't right. But I had done some business up in Scotland, uh, good, or actually doing duty with Edinburgh, Scotland. And they told me the story how the Scottish really liked the way the British marked the time they did at noon, they would fire 12 rounds at the beginning so the ship's captains could set their clocks and uh, the shopkeepers. Well, the, British, the Scottish, being Scottish, and that is my heritage, reason why fire 12 rounds at noon if they could wait one hour and save 11 rounds. So there is a howitzer up on the uh, old fort in Edinburgh that fires at 1 o'clock every day so everybody can set their clock. So I knew my number was somewhere between 1 and 21, and I decided on 7, partly because of history, but also because there are seven articles in the United States Constitution. We're going to fire one round for each article of the United States Constitution. Article 1 defines the legislative branch, composed of the House of Representatives and the Senate. It describes their powers and responsibilities. <laughs> Article 2 defines the executive branch, the qualifications for president and vice president, their powers, responsibilities, and means of removal from office. Article 3 sets up the judicial branch, the Supreme Court, and the lower court system. It protects the right of trial by jury and defines treason. Article 4 gives the states the right to make and carry out their own laws related to the people and problems of their state, so long as those laws do not conflict with the United States Constitution. Article 5 outlines the process of amending the United States Constitution. Article 6 sets the United States Constitution as the supreme law of the land to which all leaders, including the legislative, executive, and judicial, must be loyal. Article 7 addresses ratifications, declares that the United States Constitution shall take effect with nine of 13 states ratified. <laughs> Children, veterans, and all citizens of Carteret County, I give you your charters of freedom. We'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Please do not forget to sign in on the sheets in the back and come up and get your picture taken in front of the setting. Um, there is water in the back if you need a refreshment before you leave. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to a member of our team.
Thank you very much and have a great day. May we please have all elected officials, government officials, up in front of the Constitution to take a picture with Mr. Patterson. All elected officials, government officials.